Hey there everyone and welcome to this Markdown Tutorials by Coding Owls. In this video, we will be looking at how to write a markdown efficiently in Visual Studio Code and see the preview right away. And in this process, we will be making a cheat sheet for our markdown. So let us begin. Let me in, yeah. Okay everyone, so as you can see, I have already opened Microsoft Visual Studio Code in a separate folder which is named Markdown and yes we will be using this Microsoft Visual Studio code throughout this video but if you suggest, if you want to use a separate code editor it won't be a problem unless you are able to set up to preview your Markdown in your code editor you can download an extension from the extension store of your code editor to actually preview and there are lots of extension in almost every code editor to preview your Markdown but I will highly recommend to use Microsoft Visual Studio Code because Microsoft Visual Studio Code supports the preview of Markdown out of the box inside it inbuilt uh, and I'm gonna show you because we're not going to install any extension so let's right dive into our Markdown so let's create a file and name it readme.md and yes md is the extension for Markdown files so .md is there for .markdown actually and to see the preview of this file, all you have to do is go over there in the title bar or the tab pin and click on uh, right click it and you can click on open preview. Or you can just simply use control plus shift plus V as the shortcut. Okay, and now we are going to split it up so that we can see the preview in a better way. <laughs> not this, of course, not this. Okay, so we are going to split it to the right, not down. And now we're going to drag it over from here to here. So now you can see we have our preview.readme and our readme.md over here. So if you if I write heading over here, you can see it just shows me the preview out there. Okay, brilliant. So the first thing that we will be discussing in this video about markdowns is the heading. So if you have ever used HTML or ever been to HTML, you must know that there are six levels of heading from h1 to h6 and we very well know that h1 is the largest among them and h6 being the smallest of the heading to make a heading in a markdown file you will use the hash symbols so this single hash is used for h1 and this is our heading and you can see it has a nice uh, nice horizontal rule over there okay if you want a heading of h2 you can use double hashes and you can have a heading 2 cool smaller and better hash 3 you can have a heading of level 3 and you can see how my e's are always capital I'm just changing it so that it looks a little good okay and if you want h4 you can have even smaller heading 4 and if I go 5 sorry again five hashes then we can have a heading five and if i go six hashes we can have the smallest of all of them heading six as you can see the variation from heading one to heading six it is the size of the heading plus the heading was one have a very nice horizontal rule over there the second thing that we will be discussing is about bolding the text or using bold text. <coughs> so how many of you use WhatsApp and you might know to bold the text you use this star over there but not in Markdown. To bold your text you would need to use double stars and you can say bold text over here and go double star again and you can see how this text becomes bold now. You can also do the same uh, thing with double underscores the double underscores also give the same output so I will say some another some other okay makes sense in English some other bold text and double underscores so you can see double underscores all double stars give you the same output you can also remember or recite from your whatsapp window that you can also do single underscore to make your font or your text italic same is with markdown to make your text italic you can use single underscore so this is italic text here and you can see it becomes italic in our preview pane you can do the same 
with single star and you can see this star also gives away italic text over there okay so single stars and single underscore gives you italic double stars and double underscore gives you bold and we remember that this tilde symbol was used for strike through so this is a uh, standalone you can see how the text gets strike through with when we wrap it with this tilde symbol how do you pronounce this tilde or till okay whatever it is it's tilde for me so this tilde symbol uh, lets you have strike through in your markdown files so the next thing that we will be discussing in our markdown is making lists and there are two lists inside of a markdown one is ordered and the other one is unordered pretty much like every other text editor or other languages so we have this order list which you can create using a number and a dot and a space so you can see one dot space gives you a list there with an order and simply because you're putting order by yourself if you do this three dot you can see if you go four dot I mean like I would like to show you even if you go four dot you can see it puts three over there so this is a really important part you can't skip because it's a list you have to go through the list order because it is ordered don't forget that so we have another list item over there okay now we can also create a list using uh, uh, using we can also create an unordered list using these stars and we can have an item one go for another star item two if you go over here you can use dashes too so this is item three and item okay space item four so star space or dash space gives you almost the same result so and now if I'm telling you a kind of trick which is used in readme by most of the users for creating task list inside of our markdown files all you have to do is put this dash and okay I will be removing this part because it will bring unrequired margin so let's create dash and then you make those square brackets you put your to do title over here okay then you go for dash you make the square brackets you put another to do title over here now consider you have completed the first to do all you do is remove that blank space and put x over there so it kind of looks like you have completed this to do item and you're left with this one so it's a trick it is not actually a way of making list but this works really well for most of the users of markdown over there so i thought to tell you that thing now the next thing that we'll be looking is to create a table and it's not as difficult because uh, it's a lot of code so i will be putting it from my clipboard so i have copied a table over in my clipboard i'll be just pasting it over here and then i'll make you understand the things okay now you can see um this uh, this is a table so if you put this uh, uh this thing this separates your rows from your header okay and then these square this the symbols separates your columns from each other now you can see this table is a diff different column with those symbol and with those symbol you have a different column afterwards okay now if you want to change the alignments of the column you just simply use the call columns inside so if you want a center aligned you can put the columns on the uh, both side and you can see how sorry the call the column and you can see how it is center aligned now and if you just remove this left one you can see how it is right, right aligned so i can i have given you the both examples over there you can see this one is center aligned and that one is right aligned because of those column cool moving forward we will be looking how to create a nice horizontal rule in our markdown okay so to do that we simply use three dashes and you can see we have a nice horizontal rule as we had in our heading one but this one is a little bolder compared to that one if you're looking at it and now moving forward we'll be looking how to put code inside your markdown because that's one of the important feature in your readme so to put code inside your markdown what you do is put those grave accent symbol and you can see this is code okay now of course this is a single statement code so if you want to have something like you want to say suddenly in your statement put the class sorry put the class dot code so you use this grave accent symbols inside your sentences to put that code over there but if you want to have multi-line codes and most of the time most of the times we would be wanting that you simply use those triple 
grave accent symbol and you can see how there's a nice box created over there for our code you can go like okay npm install what you can say is markdown okay that makes sense so since this will be our shell part we'll put an sh which makes more sense you can also have javascript code by using those triple grave accent symbol js and those triple grave accent symbol for fencing and now you can see it will be more of a javascript style over there <coughs> okay again markdown okay now you can see how different it is you can also have html so you can go like this three grave accent symbol html and then you can go like html and html makes sense and apart from sh js and html there are things like css and other programming languages are also supported in markdown so moving forward we'll be looking how to put links in your markdown so to put a link in your markdown what you simply do is you make a square bracket you give it a title for instance we will be giving a link to google okay and then you put circle brackets or simple brackets and give the link over there so we can have a link to google Com. and if you go over there over, you can see it's a link to google.com if I click it you can see it wants to open google.com in our browser I'm closing it right now you can also have an image you do it just the same way you will do for a link um, let's say this is an image okay and let's go to our unsplash.com which I have opened in my browser and then simply open this image this looks nice to me okay open yourself buddy whatever I'll be using this copy image link and then we can just put it over there okay but is a link to the image how do you make an image you simply put this exclamatory symbol before those square brackets and you can see a nice image over there for now I will be removing this image because it's taking a lot of space in our markdown preview and it doesn't look nice over there so moving forward we can have definitions in our markdown so if you want to definitions you can have a term you go enter you do this you do space and you put your definition here so it is actually just an extended feature an extended uh, what do you call a trick rather a workaround and not actually something future of markdown and I have already told you about many things inside the markdown and so this is pretty much it for this video and if you have not subscribed to our channel yet please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon because you would not want to miss anything coming in the future in this channel also if you like this video please like it and share it with your colleagues and as always thanks for watching